Let's uh, talk about the direction forward for U.S. markets. Joining us from Boston, Massachusetts, we have Michael Vogelzang, Chief Investment Officer for Boston Advisors, joining us where he helps them manage over $2 billion in assets. So good to have you back on the program, Michael. So I guess the question is, um, what about what's happening in Europe? And I guess how does that affect the U.S., considering it looks like the U.S. economy is uh, chugging along pretty nicely? Yeah, no, I think that's that's mostly in the in the uh, sort of the the, the minds uh, mindset of, of U.S. investors is that the U.S. continues to do nicely. There continues to be strength in economic numbers, both uh, investment, uh, retail spending, housing, unemployment. We're seeing clearly a change in in economic uh, sort of vitality, which which given where we were priced last fall, uh, certainly at the end of September, at the end of a very very sharp correction. Uh, you know things are things are moved up, and they and frankly they should. So we're very very optimistic for the rest of the year, although we're getting a bit cautious at the moment. Yeah, cautious because of Europe. Uh, what are you looking at? Well, you know we look at a number of different things. I think uh, you know there there is of course the the consistent and and always present European wild card in in any of these investment decisions for financial assets. Uh, I think the, the 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 main cause of our concern is the remarkably. Um, rapid ascent in investor optimism over the last four months. You know, we, we were when we track optimism and sentiment in general, we were looking at, at, at almost uh, plumbing the depths of, of investor sentiment. That is, most investors in the end of September of last year thought that, that things were going to get much, much worse and that the world effectively was going to repeat 2008, 2009. Now, all of a sudden, after four months of very, very strong performance, and, and as you said a minute ago, you know, the NASDAQ setting new highs and the Dow at 52-week high, at, at, at certainly seasonal highs, you know, investors are looking at the glass more than half full, probably three-quarters full. And uh, when, when you get such a rapid increase in optimism, uh, that's usually a sign that we're ready for a pullback. And we think the market really should have a, have a decent 5 to 7% pullback, really to maintain its integrity and maintain its strength. So we're looking for that uh, for over the next, probably the next three weeks or a month, sometime in here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, at the, at, you know, again, we are, we are mostly fully invested at this point. Okay, but are you closing down any long positions then, considering you're, you're saying you're getting conservative on equities? Yeah, we're, we're again, you know, we're, we're, we're in, within a bullish context, we're, we're getting a little more conservative on equities just because of the strength so far year to date. Uh, we're up 7, 8% year to date. And so, you know, we think it's time for the market to take a bit of a pause. So we've trimmed a little bit at the margin. Uh, some of our long positions have been taken off. Um, but mm -hmm. again, that, that cash is ready to be deployed if we get a decent pullback. All right. So what's going to happen in Europe then? <laughs> well, gee, uh, I hope you're not waiting for me to give you the answer. I mean, it's a pretty complex situation. We think this is uh, sort of just another uh, another game of game of, of, of brinksmanship between the various parties in Europe as to whether or not the euro stays intact or not. So, uh, you know, the specifics of the Greece situation, you just talked about it in depth. I think it was exactly accurate. You've got March 10 coming up. That's going to be sort of the make or break payment for Greece. The real issue is, of course, can can the European countries um, either either synchronize their fiscal policies a bit more or maybe quite a bit more um, or, or will they have to pull the Europe the euro apart and and because of the central bank problem and so you've, you've got this dilemma so we sort of view this this sort of cyclical brinksmanship the cyclical uh, sort of crises as, as to be an ongoing event and and uh, you know we hope cooler heads prevail we hope that uh, the European leaders understand how it is they need to fix this uh, for the betterment of everyone involved, including global investors uh, around the globe, and um, yep. come, out, come out to solutions that make sense. Well, that's what the markets are hoping for, Michael. So talk to me about allocation, because you're yes. still pretty bullish on gold. In fact, you said you're quite overweight. So uh, talk to me about your portfolio holdings. How much are in equities? How much are in gold, et cetera, et cetera? Well, we're fully invested in, uh, in equities at the moment, although we, we were significantly overweight recently. We recently pulled back. Um, the, uh, the, uh, in our fixed income area, we are conservative. So we have, we have credits on, credit spread uh, investments on, but we are, we are short term in, in nature there. Uh, our, our, our most interesting position, in my opinion, has been our recent increase in gold. We've, we've had a reasonable position, sort of market weight position in gold in our benchmark uh, for, for most of the, uh, most of this, well, really the winter. Uh, probably a few weeks ago or so, we added significantly to our gold position. We, we think the um, we think gold is going to be the the in essence the beneficiary of what will be required from central banks around the globe, and that is continued monetary stimulus in whatever form okay. the banks uh, the the federal banks figure that out. So we like gold, uh, and again, we're over invested, we're overweight there. 
All right, Michael, good talking to you this morning. Michael Volgazang of uh, Boston you. Advisors, where he helps uh, oversee $2 billion in the assets.